This was I didn't believe the salaries of players when I first bought a football club and I found out actually my experiences were that the salaries that they were demanding and the ones that were reporting in the papers were understated against what you were having to pay these players. The tr trouble for a player that's getting this kind of money is the alternative is they, they run the clock down, they go out the door and you're in this invidious situation of, as a club that you are not wanting. Nobody really thinks that a 21, 22-year-old kid should be getting £200,000 a week in football. They think that they should build their trade. They know there's great rewards in the in the business of sport, and ultimately you get it when you've got this great big body of work behind mm. you. But because of the change of the legislation around contract laws, because of the Bosman ruling, because of the nature of trying to protect your assets and the inherent value of them, you're forced into this position. The key component... they're special, they merit it, no? Well, the key component is that it's, it's never about the money. It really isn't about the money. It's about being paid what you're worth, but the most important thing is being worth what you're paid. And to too many footballers are getting paid something that they're not worth. And that's the economics of football, the trickle-down effect that doesn't exist in other parts of the world, does exist in football. Because top players get paid top money, and then average players get paid top money as well. And you think to yourself, why am I paying mediocrity? This boy is on a journey. If you talk to Arsenal fans, and I've got a lot of them that my mates thinking... So far, what's been said by, by Simon Jordan around salaries in football, I agree with some of it, I disagree with others. Um, it's the nature of the beast, money in football keeps growing. The demand is there. The fame of these players contributes a lot of their wages as well. And he should know this. He understands this. But let's continue to see what he says here. He's going to be the second coming. right? I have my reservations. I, I think he might follow the pathway of Raheem Sterling and be a very good player, but not be the world-class, well-beater that people think he might be. Ooh. Arsenal are quite good at this. He must be wrapped with the right people around him to not allow this huge economic benefit that he's going to got get to distract him from his evolution as a footballer. Using Raheem Sterling here as an example is very, very weird to me. And I still think this is a remnants, a legacy that was created by the way Raheem Sterling left Liverpool Football Club and how in the way in which he joined Man City, there was this kind of notion of greed that was behind his decision to leave a lot of the liverpool press uh liverpool pundits they they went at this guy you know only cares about money doesn't care about legacy should be staying at liverpool why would you choose man city raheem sterling has had an absolute stellar career a stellar career i don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever yes this particular season at chelsea has been horrendous for him and everybody involved. But this man has four or five domestic cups, four league titles, and in his time at Manchester City, who, by the way, in the period that he was there, were lauded as one of the greatest teams in English football history. He played 339 times for them, scoring 131 goals and getting 95 assists. This was a man over 200 goal contributions, 230 odd goal contributions in just over 300 games for Man City, led them to multiple league titles, the Centurion seasons, domestic trebles. The only thing he didn't accomplish was helping to lead the team to, to European glory. And yet Raheem Sterling is being used as a sack of better not go down that route. It's horrendous. 95% of all football players that ever come through an English academy would die for not only Raheem Sterling's talent, but would give an arm and a leg for his career. Four Premier League titles. Four of them. This man le legitimately, le le legitimately, is a star player. By the way, Footballer of the Year in 2019. Footballer of the year in 2019, four Premier League titles, one FA Cup, five League Cups. It's a brilliant career so far. And he's only 28. And look, I think the move to Chelsea is a bad one for him. Let's see if it turns around under Maurizio Pozzacino. But to blame, like try and diminish Raheem Sterling's career because of a bad year at Chelsea with everything they have going on is horrendous. Horrendous. This man was world class. At Manchester City. Well class at Man City. I think Simon Jordan here. Maybe he's been indoctrinated. 
Maybe it's with, maybe it's him personally. I don't know the reason behind it. But Raheem Sterling still carries around this weight of nasty articles that were published about him and crazy greed accusations thrown at him in his early years when he first left Liverpool. And all of these things are a disgrace. There's nothing about Raheem Sterling which should be seen as negative. He should be used as a role model for so many young and up-and-coming footballers, male or female, around this country. Of course, he may have made some mistakes in his early years. Who doesn't? But the fact that he is... He didn't go down any bad paths. He's never in trouble. You don't see him getting thrown out of nightclubs. You don't see him che cheating with his teammates, you know, with his teammates, girlfriends or wives. No gambling scandals, alcohol scandal scandals, class A drug scandals, nothing. I don't understand this. I need someone to explain. It's a horrendous take. A horrendous take. Raheem Sterling. Saka would give anything to have Raheem Sterling's career. He truly would for me. He really, he really, really would. I'm, I'm, I'm horrified. I'm honestly horrified by this opinion from Simon Jordan. Think about the travel. If we are able to go to Istanbul with the two titles in the pocket. And after, and now I could see it. Okay, we won one title, we'll do it. But look United. It was once in the lifetime in UK, this is one team was United, and the way they won against Bayern Munich in Camp Nou. I was there as a little boy. I was there. How do <laughs> In May 1999, Pep Guardiola was 28. <laughs> As no, I, I promise, like, and even e <laughs> <laughs> don't know what he's talking about. He was 28 years old. <laughs> he was legit, he was 28 years old playing for Barcelona. <laughs> Man United knocked them out. Of the Champions League in the group stages. <laughs> what is he talking about? They won it. So, it's so difficult to do it. So, And the last two games or two finals they have will be terrible complicated because I know United, they want to they wanna avoid it. Uh, as any team want to avoid to win the three titles as United, so we know it. And, and, and Inter de Milan is Inter de Milan. So, so step by step to be a final product so I know we have to win the Europe so everybody knows it so that means it's going to happen I don't know we're going to try it but I don't know these years of the do you believe him do you believe him he means he lied about being a little boy <laughs> when he was 28 well, I don't know maybe he identified as a little boy I don't know I don't know do you believe that he thinks it's going to be exceedingly difficult in these two finals City fans, do you think it's going to be exceedingly difficult in these two finals? Rivals, give me your thoughts and your feelings on this as well. I want to know right now in the comment section below. 28. He was 28! And us can definitely see that, you know, that United are, are coming back. Luke Shaw's looking slim, you know. First season under the new manager, um, I think, of course, there's always going to be a bit of transition. It's clear to see what, you know, he's brought in and how he's changed, you know, the way we think, the way we play. I think he, he wants to bring in a lot of intensity. Um, you know, I think everything he wants the team to do is, is, is high intensity. He wants us to be aggressive on the front foot, you know, pressing as high as possible. Uh, but also with the ball, I think he's made us better. I think we're definitely... You know, more of a th threat now, you know, with the ball, when we're on the ball, it's clear to see we're going in the right direction. So I agree with Luke Shaw here. I think the club are moving in the right direction. A big summer ahead is needed. I don't think there's a a any doubt in that whatsoever. Rivals will disagree, but we've surpassed your expectations this season, so he's right. And I think, like I touched on before, we, 
we have to be challenging for the for the title. And I think with this team and you know definitely with the directions the manager's going under, um, I'm sure we're going to make new signings, big signings this summer. So you know hopefully we can we can get them done as quick as possible so they're in for pre-season. I think our aim at the beginning of the next season has to be you know winning the Premier League and the Champions League. And there we go. And I'm glad that Luke Shura said this because. This is more of a dig out at Lee Gunner, really. And, and people that kind of, why is the expectation to not win the league? Well, there you go. There it is. There, there it's at. The expectation is to try and win it. To try and win it, which means to challenge for it. Contextually, by the end of the season, whether you do or you don't, you review why. You get to a Champions League final and lose narrowly in a very competitive game to one of the best teams in the world. You don't typically throw your ba the baby out with the bathwater. We don't win either the Champions League or the Premier League because we're nowhere near good enough and we get outclassed every step of the way. Then you have to look at the management and you look at players. But I'm glad that Man United players are setting very high standards early. We know there's been tremendous growth this year, quicker than we already believe. But as Luke Shaw there said, and I think every Man United fan worthy salt agrees, with the right summer window, we must challenge. Agree 100, 110 percent. Remember, before you leave today, you can still enter. There's one day remaining to enter the raffle to win two tickets plus £250 spending money to the FA Cup final, which could see two stages of the treble complete or the treble ended. It's going to be historic either way. So you should get yourself there. You should be there. Enter the raffle now. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again very soon.